Maybe land it twice. To the body, he tries the uppercut again and misses. Douglas comes back with a left and a right. Since the peak of Iron Mike's career, multiple generations of heavyweight boxers have come and gone. Yet, none managed to overshadow Tyson. Despite losses to Holyfield and Lewis, none of them surpassed the scandalous fame and popularity of Mike. Today, we'll reminisce about Tyson's first defeat, when he lost to James Buster Douglas. Douglas wasn't marked by great achievements. He was knocked out three times. Buster Douglas was 29 years old. Prior to the fight with Tyson, he was viewed as an ordinary heavyweight. 30 fights, 4 losses, 3 of which ended in knockouts, and only one chance at the title. In 1987, when Iron Mike's career was just beginning, Douglas faced IBF champion Tony Tucker and lost due to a technical knockout in the 10th round. This is in deep trouble on the ropes. Almost stop this one. Buster embarked on a streak of 6 wins, defeating former champion Trevor Burbick and future champion Oliver McCall on points. Two significant victories gave Douglas another shot at the title, against the giant Tyson. But everyone was sure, Buster was an easy opponent for Mike. Before the fight, he was only ranked 7th in the ring's heavyweight rankings. Nobody took him seriously. Overall, Douglas was highly motivated and entered the fight with Mike with an impressive record, 35 fights and 29 victories. But his psychological state raised questions. Before the fight, Douglas' mother passed away from a stroke, and his pregnant wife was diagnosed with a malignant tumor. The boxer himself was hospitalized due to severe flu just 10 days before the match. As for Iron Mike, by the late 80s, he was already at the peak of his popularity. An undisputed world champion in the heavyweight division, he nearly always won by knockout. By then, Tyson wasn't a modest guy anymore. Fame and big money had consumed the boxer. But as usual, success had its downside. Even audiences grew weary of the knockout victories and lost interest in his fights. Ticket sales for Mike's bouts declined, because few were willing to pay hefty amounts to watch a couple of rounds and head home after Tyson's swift victories. In this atmosphere, 1989 came to a close for Mike. Likely, the boxer himself wasn't too bothered by it. He spent most of his time partying with a group of less responsible women. The thing is, Tyson stopped training. This led to the cancellation of his November bout against Donovan Ruddick, an undefeated fighter, by his promoter Don King. King cited Tyson's illness as the reason for canceling the fight, although Tyson later admitted he simply didn't want to box or train. Consequently, the next match for the world champion was scheduled for 1990. King, assessing his boxer's condition, picked James Buster Douglas, who was just 7th in the WBC rankings, as Tyson's opponent. Thus, the latter essentially saved Tyson, who had lost to Ruddick. The bout was supposed to take place in Tokyo. King expected significant sales, as the land of the rising sun was eager to see Tyson perform. Tyson didn't draw any lessons from the cancellation of the 1989 fall fight. His preparation for the bout with Douglas also essentially failed. Mike didn't resemble himself even as he stepped into the ring. There was a lack of ferocity in his eyes that was present in previous fights. It felt like his mind wasn't in Tokyo Dome at that moment. On the contrary, Buster came in charged up to the maximum. Family issues had only toughened him. He sought revenge. Fear could be seen in the eyes of Tyson's past opponents. Buster didn't have it. Tyson attempted to start the match in his usual style. Mike moved forward, trying to get into his comfortable close range, but Douglas stood firm against the champion's pressure. The contender started countering with stiff jabs, noticeably dampening Iron Mike's aggressive spirit. Gradually, Douglas himself began to take the lead and wasn't afraid to engage in combination work. Left jab, he landed twice. He lost the right hand of Buster Douglas, but the problem I'm still seeing is... See, Mike has to be careful also because Mike's standing. Left jab lands again for Tyson. He has not yet gone to the body. When a similar scenario repeated in the second and third rounds, it became clear that Tyson would have a tough time and Douglas might be having the best fight of his life. 
The start of each round saw Tyson's active actions, but with each passing round, his period of activity dwindled quicker. Mike's position was becoming unfavorable. Buster confidently jabbed, forcefully, precisely, and accurately. Douglas sparingly engaged his powerful right hand but timed it well. Primarily due to the jab, the contender achieved a crucial strategic advantage. In the fifth round, the champion's left eye was closed due to a hematoma. And then Tyson faced another issue. His corner wasn't prepared. His trainer, Aaron Snowell, hadn't even bothered to bring an iron and ice in case of cuts. They tried to treat Mike's facial injuries with a medical glove filled with icy water. with the jab. Tyson's trying to leap. There was an expression of Tyson. The double day. How would this? Good luck, took Douglas by Douglas again. By the fifth round, the champion's condition was complicated by the eye problem, which started closing after a precise attack from his opponent. However, Despite this turn of events, the champion still had a chance for a favorable outcome. Hey, and Braddock, not as big as this. Crease it. Again, with the leadoff right, Tom. And another right hand up. And that becomes a factor, especially for the very first time. Has been in previous rounds, but there's very little far dominant showing over. Be in an uproar right now. Jams, right on Tyson and whipped a sunny listen in my Douglas also noticeably tired after the halfway point, and in the eighth round, Mike found an opening for one of his signature moves, an uppercut. Upon close inspection of the video, it could be estimated that Douglas was on the canvas for at least 12 seconds. It was also evident that the count of the timekeeper, sitting by the ropes, and the referee's count differed by two seconds. Thus, even in such a sorry state, Tyson could have easily won that fight. In fact, Douglas was saved simply by the referee's incorrect count. Regardless, during the break between rounds, James recovered, while Mike seemed to be further deteriorating. This stretch belonged to the contender, tries the uppercut again and misses. Douglas comes back with a left and a right. Tyson needs the ropes for support. Douglas wailing away. Without the ropes, Mike would have gone down. Let's take a look. Two lefts and just Mike. Buster Douglas is just going at him. And when he got him in trouble, he went at him. The climax arrived in the 10th three-minute mark. Towards the middle of the round, Douglas began throwing light jabs. Tyson didn't react and simply absorbed the attacks. Luring Mike with a front hand strike, Douglas unexpectedly landed a powerful right uppercut that stunned the champion. Following that, Douglas unleashed a series of strikes that sent Tyson to the canvas. The champion tried to rise, Initially, he bit the mouthpiece and attempted to regain his vertical stance. However, all these efforts were futile. Thus, Douglas secured victory with a brutal knockout, which is still considered one of the most sensational upsets in boxing history.